today I'm reviewing the Realm Lab Dokdo Sunscreen. And really quick, I just want to say, purchase products with my own money. I'll never waste your time with sponsored ads or videos. So if that's something you're into, like, subscribe, share the video, check out the link below, or check out my Patreon community. So, uh, Realm Lab really has done a pretty darn good, good job with their sunscreens. And I saw this one recently, uh, and now it's on YesStyle. I think YesStyle got all the Round Lab goodies, which is exciting. Uh, and picked this up a few months ago, right when it came out, and I'm really happy to share my review with you guys. Uh, I'm wearing this one currently underneath my foundation and over my moisturizer, and it feels uh, really incredible on skin. And if you're interested in a demo of application of it, uh, check out my Peach Slices Copper Peptide Serum uh, first impressions review because I apply this one after that. So if you're interested in the full face demo, I'll try and remember to link to it below. I will also link to it at Yes Style. So, okay, so they say the sunscreen containing willow bark extract provides gentle and mild skin care to sensitive skins and centella asiatica leaf extract soothes sensitive skin. Pretty simple. Uh, simple packaging. I wish they put a little bit of English on their packaging because... I have so many other products and I never remember, like, is this the mask? Is this the cleanser? Is this the moisturizer? And then I don't want to put the cleanser on and go to bed with that on. Because I've done that once before and uh, my skin handled it okay. But it just wasn't the best thing. So it was the Peter Thomas Roth Cloud Cleanser. I got mistaken for the Cloud Cream because I had two samples and I mistake them. Mistook them. Okay, first criteria is packaging. No issues with the packaging. I do like, uh, they have a needle nose tip at the end of this one, so it's effective for not applying too much. Uh, there's a couple sunscreens I have where I instantly will open them up and like a ton will come out and then it feels like a waste. So, unless I can apply it all, which I usually do. But Okay, in terms of denatured drying types of alcohol, I know everyone's torn on this. You do you. If you want denatured alcohol in your products, go for it. And if it works for you, go for it. If you don't like it, don't use it. I mean, some people don't mind it. It's a very controversial subject. I get it. I will tolerate some denatured alcohol in certain sunscreens because I think it helps them dry down better. But in a lot of like hydrating products for my very dry, sensitive skin, it just doesn't work as well. This one does not contain any of that. In terms of fragrance, this one has no scent to it. It does contain bergamot extract, which is different than bergamot oil. Bergamot oil will give things an obvious strong scent. Bergamot extract does not give things a scent. Uh, and bergamot extract is actually an astringent ingredient. So I did not ding them for the fragrance because bergamot extract is different. But some people may be sensitive to that. So keep that in mind. In terms of the manufacturing location, this one is made in Korea. Uh, I read on Reddit the other day, someone mentioned that apparently the loophole that allowed sunscreen Armageddon to happen has been closed, but I have been unable to corroborate that. So if you have a information on where to find that source, leave a comment. I, I searched. I could not find any corroboration of that. So at this point, I'm still leery. And I think when you're buying K-Beauty sunscreens, do some research on the ingredients before you blindly trust them. I, you know what? I always had that gut feeling that that Purito sunscreen was not as good to be true as it was. But there was a very famous cosmetic uh, YouTuber that left great rave reviews of it. So I doubted myself thinking, you know what? If she knows more about all this than I do, I mean, uh, I, you know, I'm like, I didn't, I didn't go with my gut feeling, but something to me about it just seemed wrong and ended up being all of us were wrong so okay but my gut was right but anyway okay in terms of the spf this one is spf 50 plus so no issues with that i recommend doing 30 or above if you can do 50 if your skin tolerates spf 50 go for it especially figuring the fact that most of us under apply sunscreen so if you can go with a higher spf that's a good reason too figuring we don't apply it as liberally as we should. Even uh, the most uh, conscientious of us are prone to do that time to time. Okay, in terms of the UVA protection factor, this one has PA with four pluses after it. Uh, in terms of the UVA ingredients, we've got Mixoral SX, uh, Uvenal A+, and Tinsorb S, which are all uh, UVA filters, three of them. That's pretty good. 
although it doesn't have a ton of tin syrup s in here but it's still in there so uh and then the other two are very good at uva filtering and then okay the filters in total so we've got uvenil t150 which is a uvb filter very photo stable mexoral sx i just mentioned uh it's a uva range sunscreen it's actually a l'oreal exclusive sunscreen but they must be allowing brands to use it they probably charge them a fee or something because i mean l'oreal is getting their money and l'oreal professional is coming to sephora in the u.s now which is interesting but okay then we've got uvenil a plus which is a uva protection filter very photo stable great for the whole uva range then we've got polysilicone 15 which is a silicone based chemical agent that protects in the uvb range and then again we've got that tinsorb s which is a uva and uvb filter uh and very photo stable so five chemical filters in this one and i love all the uva filters they used much more impressive than almost any chemical sunscreen made in the u.s or pretty much any of them okay in terms of the white cast there is none it applies pretty clear once you smooth it into your skin feels really nice but when you apply it it is clear it is transparent there is no white cast whatsoever uh, in terms of the texture so this one's got just a really nice lotiony texture to it feels really nice on the skin uh, it's easy to liberally apply this one it doesn't pill and it's also pretty darn easy to reapply as well so i love this one it feels so nice on the skin and it really works well over pretty much every moisturizer and uh, under every foundation i've tried it with uh, in terms of the ease of use i kind of touched on that a little bit but very easy to apply feels super nice natural finish once it soaks in give it a minute to soak in very easy to apply liberally and also this one's a nice one that's easy to reapply during the day so if in a couple hours you want to reapply it very easy no pilling no issues at all with it i love it it feels super nice there is one caveat to all of this which i will get to but okay let's stay on track here okay in terms of the ingredients we've got niacinamide uh, then we've got humectant sodium hyaluronate sodium acetylated hyaluronate and hydrolyzed hyaluronic acid we've got that white willow bark we've got panthenol and lantolin all for soothing we've got green tea extract there's an antioxidant soothing ingredient uh, we've got uh, pine pinus densiflora which is an antioxidant and antimicrobial we've got coffee seed extract which is an antioxidant we've got a type of allergy in here which is skin conditioning and protecting and then finally we've got vitamin e which is an antioxidant in terms of acnogenic ingredients in this one we've got a few we've got cetera alcohol we've got propylene glycol decaprate uh, glycerol stearate vitamin e and carbamer again it depends on your skin type some people won't have any issues with these some people with very acne prone skin may have an issue with one or all of them just depends on the skin type okay so we get to a couple of caveats with this in terms of animal testing i thought round lab was cruelty free at this point when i google it and do some research on it it is unclear if they're cruelty free or not they're not certified by any organizations in fact a lot of organizations state they're not cruelty free you know when i reviewed their uh, product from them a year and a half ago it really looked clear that they were cruelty free at this point it's heads or tails i can't tell leave a comment if you know more it's very up in the air okay then we get to the other caveat uh in terms of performance so this is a wonderful day-to-day -day sunscreen i'm wearing today it feels super nice super light my neck tolerates it well which is nice my neck is very sensitive feels like a moisturizer really works well nicely throughout the day at the end of the day my skin doesn't look greasy and it doesn't accentuate dry patches which is hard because a lot of sunscreens at the end of the day they either look greasy or they have a lot of dry patches uh, this one doesn't have that at all the main con of this sunscreen is it's not water or sweat resistant so on a day where it's 95 out you want to be sure to be reapplying it liberally frequently because if you're sweating a lot it will disappear quickly uh my friend's niece the other day i have my sunscreen the fenchelin sunscreen camera and uh so she had been at the beach 
And she got a little pink right here when I took the sunscreen camera and I could tell that all of her sunscreen had faded. Right around her mouth, was probably, she's probably smiling or sweating. And when a sunscreen's not water sweat resistant, then things like that happen. Obviously, if you're swimming, either way you want to reapply it. But it's just the only real downside. But it's hard to find a sunscreen that has it all. You know, it feels great on the skin. It's like lotion. It's easy to reapply. It doesn't bug my eyes. Water resistant, sweat resistant, cruelty free, affordable. UVA filters, it's just, it's like the needle in a needle stack. Or <laughs> the needle in the haystack, whatever. Anyway. Okay, last but not least in terms of price, it's pretty affordable. It's 50 milliliters, 1.7 ounces. You know what, if you're going to use it a lot and it doesn't last that long, but I mean, that's about it for packaging. Uh, so $20, not terribly expensive. Uh, but if you apply it liberally, it'll what last. I don't know, if you use this liberally every day, how long would a bottle like this last? I don't know. I don't use one typically that long enough that I finish it before I try something else out so okay last but not least in terms of score so 15 is a perfect score this one got a 12 it's really wonderful I really appreciate it definitely be using a lot this winter and uh, yeah easy to wash off at the end of the day as well which is nice so which also means it's not super water resistant so con there uh, anyway, so this one's lovely. I really enjoy it. Interesting hearing from you guys if you had a chance to check this one out yet or not. And if you have what your thoughts are, leave a comment. Love hearing from you guys. And stay tuned for more tomorrow. Thanks so much. Bye, guys.